Welcome to another lesson on Lunch with the Lord. I'm Pastor Mark, and this lesson will be looking at Philippians chapter 4, starting at verse 6. But before we begin, Jeremiah 15, 16, Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. Now, Paul here is going to deal with a situation that is going on in amongst the believers in Philippi. And he says here in verse 6, Be careful for nothing but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Now, he says here, be careful. And the Greek word is merimneo. And it's in the present tense imperative mood, meaning present tense right now, at this time, it is imperative that you stop being anxious. Stop worrying about things, all right? Be careful for nothing. Nothing here means even, even the little things of life. Little things that we don't think are worth bothering God about. Be careful. Don't worry about anything, okay? Now it seems from from these Greek word these Greek words that Paul's using here and the tenses that he uses that the Philippian believers had somewhat of a problem of worry, all right? And as human beings, we all have that problem. Every one of us has experienced worried before. We can worry about big things, little things. We worry. We got all kinds of stuff we can worry about. Worry about our, our children, our our parents, if they're elderly, maybe they live alone. Oh, there's there's worry about finances, worry about work. There's always something that we can worry about in our sinful flesh, right? Because the sinful flesh loves to worry about something, all right? But the question isn't what the question isn't uh, uh, are we going to continue to worry? The question is, what do we do with that worry, all right? Do we, do we want to take control of that worry? Tell God, hey God, I'll handle this worry. I'll, I'll, I'll deal with it. I'm, I'm all right. I'm, I'm strong in the Lord. I can handle this worry. But you know what usually ends up happening? We get consumed by this worry. We can't handle it, all right? And it consumes us and it affects our life. And, and, and that's, that's what was happening here. And, or do we take our worries to the Lord and trust that He will take care of them? And in Matthew chapter 6, this is a passage of scripture that you've heard many times, but we'll read it again. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, starting at verse 31. Therefore, take no thought. That means don't worry. Don't worry what you shall eat or what you shall drink or the clothes that you're going to have on. Jesus said, look, don't worry about the things you're going to eat, the clothes, the, the clothes, the things you're going to drink about your job, don't worry about those things. For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things. Listen, long before today, God knew what you were going to need for today. The clothes you wear, the food you eat, the home you're living in. God knows your needs. And there's no sense in worrying about it because God's already planned ahead of time that he's going to provide your needs for you, okay? Verse 33, but seek ye first. Seek ye first what? A cheeseburger? No. Seek ye first what? Orange juice? Something to drink? No. Seek ye first what? Clothes to wear? No, no. Seek ye first what? The job? No. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And if we do all these other things, God said he will take care of them. 
All these things shall be added unto you. Our job as children of God is to seek first the righteousness of God. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seek first, like it says in Colossians 3, 1 through 3. We said it many times, you know. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For you're dead and your life is hid with Christ and God. As Christians, we seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness. And God will provide food for you. God will provide uh, clothes for you, stuff to drink, a job to have. He'll provide it. Verse 34. Take therefore no thought. That means don't worry about tomorrow. Because tomorrow will worry about the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Don't worry. So Paul is saying, Paul is encouraging these Philippian uh, believers, be careful. Don't worry about anything, okay? But in everything. It says here, in everything. Now the question is, do we take everything to the Lord? All right? Or do we think that there are some things in our life that we don't want to bother God with? Ah, they're just petty little things, right? We, we can trust God and we can pray to God to protect us on a two-week vacation, but we can't pray to God to protect us going down to the shopping center for 45 minutes to get a, to get some food, right? Or to do something or to go shopping for clothes, right? We can, we can trust God and we want God to take care of the big things in our life, but we feel like the little things are just, ah, they're just petty things. I'm just walking the dog. Why do I need to pray to God just for a walk, a, 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 a 15 minute walk of the dog down the street and back, right? But yet he says, be careful. Don't worry about anything. Don't worry about, but in everything, in everything, he says, what? In everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. All right? So, in everything, we give everything to the Lord. Now, I want to read some of these verses to you. This is God's teaching on every step. Every step. In Job chapter 14, verse 16, the word of God says, For now you number my steps. Dost thou not watch over my sin? Listen, listen. How you, you think to yourself, God, God is, is not important on me walking the dog for five minutes. You know, God doesn't care if I go go to the a cafe for, for I don't want to bother God with a with a with an hour uh, visit with my friend at a cafe. I mean, but I want to trust God about about something that's going to happen for a day or two. But no, it says here, for now you number my steps. Listen, God numbers your steps. Okay, in in Job chapter thirty one. Job chapter 31, verse 4, the Bible says, Does not he see my ways and count all my steps? Listen, if you could ask God today, he could tell you exactly, exactly the number of steps you've taken in your life up to this point. Up to this point, he could tell you the, the exact number. Why? Why? Because, because he cares about your steps? No. Because he cares about you. That's, that's what he's numbering. He, he watching every step you take, counting every step, because he cares for you. In Psalm, Psalm chapter 37, verse 23, Psalm 37, 23, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. And then in Psalm 
119, verse 133. Psalm 119, 133. Bible says, Order my steps in thy word, and let not any iniquity have dominion over me. God sees and knows every step that we take. And this tells me that God is interested in every detail of my life. God is interested in every detail of your life. Yes, you're going to go and you're going to walk the dog. You don't think God is interested, but he's there and he's with you and he's counting your steps. Counting your steps. Every step you take. Okay? So, Paul here says, don't be worrying or anxious about anything, but in everything, in everything, just pray to God. Just It doesn't have to be some long five-minute prayer about a, about a two-minute dog walk. No, it can be just pray to God, Father, I'm, I'm walking the dog, bless this time, protect me, right? Bless this time. I'm going, I'm going shopping today. I'm going shopping. I've been there 500 times before. I'm going up. God, just protect me on the road and, and, and keep me safe. And keep, keep my family safe at home too. Right? That's all you have to do. And in your heart, God, God the Holy Spirit reads your heart. And, and you may not have to say a lot, but in your heart, you mean a lot. And God sees it. And, and he honors that prayer. And he says here, Be careful for nothing, but in everything, in every detail, by prayer, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. All right? By prayer and supplication, we need to practice taking all things to the throne of God in humility and deep prayer as we practice as we practice taking things to God as we taking everything to God it becomes our habit and then we find it easy to bring all things to the throne of God as you do it as you take your dog walks your your travels here and there the little things as you practice praying to God about even the little things it becomes a habit, and it becomes part of our life, all right? I remember, uh, I remember when, when I uh, heard months ago the job that I have, I deliver uh, uh, propane and, and my job, and in, we have to, uh, at, at the end of every uh, delivery, we have to shut all of our valves off on the truck. And then when I, I, I may only drive a half a mile, and when I get to the next customer's house, I have to open up all the valves again. And then when I'm done making that delivery, I have to shut all the valves off on the truck, okay? And then I drive to the next customer, and the cu next customer may only be 200 feet down the road, but I'm supposed to do that. And at first, it was very hard to do because it was it was not something that we liked doing but after a while I got used to it and now after almost a year of doing it now it's it's part of my habit every time I go to a customer's house I open up all the valves I make the delivery and then I shut all the valves it's just part of what I do and now whenever I get in the truck I think to myself are all the valves shut and it's just part of our life and that's what God that's what God wants prayer and supplication to be. It's just normal part of our life. But if we don't start doing it, if we don't begin to do it, it won't become a habit in our life. All right. We're going to finish this lesson and we're going to continue Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Next lesson. Until then, walk with the Lord. I know he walks with you.